Xander, what are your thoughts on the bullet ant? Those are his thoughts. <laughs> the most pain I have ever experienced in my life, physical pain that is, is when my best friend brought pepper spray to class. <sighs> Unfortunately, the film has been lost to the apathetic sands of time. I have never been shot, and I hope to keep it that way. But this guy describes it pretty underwhelmingly. So, I don't know why something as ubiquitously painful as the m most brutal hymenoptera would be named after something that a guy named Thomas Gilbert would describe so nonchalantly. Like, why? Justin O. Schmidt creator of the Schmidt Sting Pain Index and author of probably the most stimulating and engaging books my eyes have ever endured described the sting of the bullet ant as walking over flaming charcoal with a three inch nail embedded in your heel. Why would anybody it is tied for first place as the most painful insect sting in the world, along with the tarantula hawk, which the venom, the pain only lasts about five minutes, and the warrior wasp, whose pain lasts about two hours. The bullet ant, 24 hours which is why it is called in Spanish La Ventecuatra Hora Hormiga. Luckily, one sting worth of venom can kill a mammal only the size of a small rat. The venom is highly lethal to mammals, having a lethality of 1.4 milligram venom per kilogram body weight, and is produced in a prodigious quantity of 250 micrograms per average ant. The two combine to yield a projected capacity for one sting to kill a mammal of 180 grams, about the size of a young female Norway rat. Arr! This is my boy. This is my boy. Frederick Nietzsche can be quoted. The discipline of suffering, of great suffering. Do you not know that it is this discipline alone that has produced all the elevations of humanity so far? Do you? The Satere Mawe people, an indigenous group in the Amazon, have probably never heard of Frederick Nietzsche, but they're... Xander, I'm trying to do a video! Uh, but their rite of passage, the initiation, implies a philosophical connection. Initiates must wear gloves, interwoven with the ants, 20 times before they can be considered warriors. Oh my god, that is so metal. If you can undergo this ritual and, like, succeed, there's not much in terms of physical deterrence that can overcome you. Your willpower would be invincible. That is, until the deterrent becomes psychological. The Irukanji jellyfish is a subspecies, ouch, is a subspecies of the box jellyfish. It doesn't look nearly as cool as the Portuguese man o war, but its stings leave a scar that reminds me of a lightning strike. Every resource I researched goes into great detail about the physical pain of the sting, 
but no resource describes the psychological effects any more than the words sense of impending doom. In 2007, Lisa Gershwin said on The Science Show with Robin Williams, patients believe they're going to die and are so certain of it that they'll actually beg their doctor to kill them just to get it over with. Oh my god, what? <laughs> wow, that's a lot. <laughs> I also found references to the same impending doom sense and cardiac arrest victims, but it is uncertain whether that sense of impending doom is a consequence of the tachycardia or of the knowledge that you're having a heart attack and you're probably going to die. Victims of the Irukandji jellyfish experience unprecedented levels of adrenaline and noradrenaline. These levels combined with the massive increase in heart rate, or maybe the adrenaline and noradrenaline cause the increase in heart rate, trigger the fight or flight response, which thus causes the sense of impending doom. Page 230 of Into the Magic Shop by James Doty explains that the heart sends more signals to the brain via the vagus nerve than the brain sends to the heart. What research has shown is that the heart sends far more signals to the brain than the brain sends to the heart. And while both the cognitive and emotional systems in the body are intelligent, there are far more neural connections that go from the heart to the brain than the other way around. Both our thoughts and our feelings can be powerful, but a strong emotion can silence a thought. While we can rarely think out, while we can rarely think ourselves out of a strong emotion, in fact, it is the strongest emotions that will trigger ruminating or incessant thought. Through meditation, I learned how to instantaneously slow my heartbeat back to a resting rhythm. This ability proved useful when a stranger tried to pick a fight at the dog park because Xander was being too rough. Can you imagine that? He's biting my hand. This skill also proved useful uh, to... Why are you doing this? This skill also proved useful to stay focused during a jujitsu tournament. So both avoiding conflict and kicking ass. It's, it's a useful skill. Combine the indomitability of will against a physical impediment. Gain out. Gained from the bullet ant with the indomitability of will against psychological and emotional impediment gained from the Irukandji jellyfish, perhaps you may be mentally invincible. Mentally invincible. Mentally invincible. Mentally invincible. He's still biting my hand. Or maybe you'll just be crazy. That's also a possibility. If you can find any resources that go into more detail regarding the impending sense of doom, please put it in the comments. I would very eagerly read it. I, ow. For further reading, Jack Barnes got an Irukandji and stung himself with it, along with his nine-year-old and a lifeguard volunteer to see what would happen, which is so ridiculous. What? You can also look up how two tablespoons of nutmeg induce a LSD-like trip, uh, but with more impending doom. What? So yeah, that's uh, three organisms that deliver an unnecessarily excruciating amount of pain. Xander doesn't... Xander, baby, you have a mouthful of daggers, you know that? Why are you giving me this look like you've been biting my hands? I'll see you later.